The following episode of the Comics and Crypto podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know sh. This is the Comics and Crypto Podcast. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, Collectors World in a Digital Age. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics is where the next billionaires will be rich. Comics and Crypto. Today we are joined by a very special guest, a talented filmmaker that has become an overnight sensation with the VV community. His video content is not only entertaining, but also shows us the possibilities of Web3. And today we are excited to premiere his latest creation. Please welcome Metaverse Life. Is that you, Metaverse Life? Is that you? Uh, what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> what's good? Uh, the ghost of Roth Ryan now appears as a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roth Ryan, former ghost of the podcast. Very proud to have him on here. I, I honestly like I'm I'm very humbled because you guys have such incredible talents come on to this podcast excluding you guys and it's uh <laughs> and so like i i just don't i'm like what am i going to be able to contribute that these people do because they're like changing the way web3 is going to be and i am just an artist <laughs> <laughs> well first of all we've never claimed to be talented we just we just, <laughs> just bring talented people on <laughs> I claim to be talented. Hold on. I'm not no shit, but I can draw really well. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't draw good. I draw, I draw good, guys. Speaking yep. of drawing good. <laughs> hey, Rob. What's your background Yo. as an artist? Uh, well, I come from the uh, film and television side of things. Uh, basically self-taught since I was very young. Uh, my uh, brief backstory, I had heart surgery when I was really young and was laid up in a bed for... Uh, a long time over the summer and of course when you're young the summer is like prime time to shine right it's to get out there and play with your friends my dad felt bad that I couldn't do anything so he pulled out his old Sony like eight high eight millimeter digital camera and was like hey play with this and so that just sparked my interest in film I'd always love like Back to the Future Jurassic Park and you know Indiana Jones those kind of movies um, but really got to dive in and play around um and shot a bunch of movies with uh, a bunch of daycare kids that my mom, my mom ran a daycare. So shot a bunch of movies with them. They were all my extras and actors. Years later, still shooting with daycare kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's his specialty, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, just, that's just what you call a Sean and Kevin, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go to college. Uh, I uh, basically got into a couple universities and went and toured them. And the biggest takeaway I was getting was that it's about getting experience. A lot of the people that I had met coming out of the university were still working as like production assistants. And I felt like I'd rather not spend $60,000 a year doing that and would rather try to make money while doing what I love. And so uh, spent a big chunk of my life just whatever I made money spending it on making movies and have been lucky enough to work with some of my best friends yeah roth, roth and kevin and i have, have been blessed to work together on multiple projects that were written and directed by roth yes sir yes sir we're actually i, I want to include those links in the details of this youtube video as well yeah a few years ago i had i had met sean at a film festival sean can tell that story he's really good at it uh but um i had wrote something and he reached out to him and said hey i would love to do this movie it's very black mirror style um about a family celebrating christmas uh, I don't want to dive too much into it because I do plan on resharing that uh, on Twitter near Christmas time, but it's very much in the realm of the metaverse and virtual reality and that kind of stuff. A couple of years ago, I wrote a movie called I Miss Us and was lucky enough to work with Sean and Kevin on it. It's a mixture of a thriller, horror, and romance movie crossing between different time periods. And it's been really fun watching it go on the festival circuit and getting to go to the festivals with these guys. Um, and I'm excited to release it uh, later this year. Yeah, the one thing I'll, I'll say about Roth and his dedication to his craft, man, I mean, like self-education is something that he was talking about earlier, but man, I, I don't think I've ever 
worked with anybody that's so damn talented and so damn driven in my life. Like, <laughs> and it sh- and also it shows in his content that he makes uh, on Vivi as well, which I'm very excited to talk to you about today. But before yeah. we do that, before we do that, what? Before we do that, that was what? A, that was, that was, that's a weird lead in. <laughs> That wasn't clear to me. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was. I thought you were going to do like a sponsor bit. I was like, "What?" That's your next question. <laughs> Rob, how did you get into Vivi? Uh, regretfully, by Sean O'Hare. Um, <laughs> being around Sean uh, and watching how his passion just ignited uh, very early on for this platform, you couldn't help but get involved. His joy bled out into everybody else. It was either joy, joy, or I just joined to get him to shut up. But I can't remember exactly. <laughs> it was a combination of both. Yeah, uh, but what what sold me on it was the IPs attached to it, and the utility p- uh, potential utility, and how incredible the community is, and when they come together and support each other, and just like it feels like everybody's trying to help each other grow um, and, and encourage each other. It's very, it's very wonderful. It's the uh, nerd version of. Um, crossfit <laughs> <laughs> love that <laughs> i think you just like showing off that you got better drops than all of us i remember in the beginning yeah. you used to score literally everything and we'd all be like how uh, the fuck did you get that yeah. Un- yeah. unbelievable i remember God. when the first when the comic books first dropped and i was telling roth you got to go for this marvel comics one you got to go for it and we're you know we were able to get like choir like five or six of them and and that's what happened and then roth ended up getting a low mint secret rare which he still has to this day I mean, it was either that he, he sold it or I told my disown him for life. So it's his choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think first was the DeLorean because, of course, Back to the Future, incredible movie. Um, and I have a, a big Back to the Future collection of physical items, uh, models, Legos, books, VHSs, the Blu-rays, the DVDs, posters, like so many yeah. things. And so I was like, oh, this is an easy sell for me. I'll just go ahead and get this. Um, and then when he got me involved on the comic side of things, I really didn't want to go for it. Uh, and he's like, $7, man. It's just $7. I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> Take my $7. And then I remember texting him the image, like, did I get anything good? And him just <laughs> calling me immediately, being like, Roth, you got a secret rare? I was like, is that good? He's like, Roth, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're right. After that, it was just like I, I felt really lucky because like I, I would randomly get like an ultra rare on a drop. That was back in the days, though, when we would get like 14 comics on the drop. Yeah, but when we yeah. when we all had seven phones and we're, we're yeah. tapping them all simultaneously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I felt so long ago. <laughs> yeah. I miss those days. Almost a year ago at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's now, I think, pretty rare that I actually hit anything on the drop. I, I find myself going for the things that I have a little bit more a- attachment to. Um, mm-hmm. I love the the idea of these one of ones, but uh, they feel a little bit out of reach for things that I I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, obviously Disney Golden Moments and that kind of stuff. Outside of the uh, the MC One Secret Air, what are your favorite NFTs that you own on the platform? Oh, great question. Um, probably the most interactive ones. The ones that I actually get to like play with. So love being able to control the DeLorean and like drive it around. Uh, the eat with each VV update on iOS, it has become easier and easier to operate them and less glitchy. The AR has gotten better. Um, I love playing around with the T Rex and you know Blue the Raptor. It's funny because I think most of them, the value comes from the actual utility and using it rather than the actual value monetarily. That's that's where I tend to lean. Well, that makes sense since you're making the videos with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I loved your recent video for the Oktoberfest. That was so fun. That was super fun. Involving the crowds around you too, which is really cool. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Yeah, that, that was actually really awesome. It was cool because I remember shooting the last clip and it was a sign that says no alcohol but beyond this point. And a security guard was sitting right there and he's just like, can I help you? And I was like, oh, <laughs> so sorry, man. I, I, I'm kind of nerding out over here. I'm shooting this like 3D model and I'm like trying to like, you know, tell him like I'm not crazy. And I show it to him and he's like, whoa, that's actually really cool. I was like, do you want to be in the video? Like stand next to him? He's like, yeah. I was like, awesome. This is so cool. <laughs> so Roth, the videos that you've been making. Yes. yes. <laughs> let's, let's dive into those. I mean, man, you you took over fast. The content that you released 
immediately had an impact on this community. Literally overnight, man. I mean, people just really resonated with the things that you were making. And also you just consistently kept making this really cool content. What inspired you to start this journey of VV videos? That's a great question. Um, it, it, it really started with Boba Fett. Uh, I was in Carmel and uh, just wanted to play around with it. And I thought of it like a, a goofy idea of it, like spying on me while I was trying to have a drink. And my girlfriend was there with me. I had her shoot it and poor thing. She did like 20 takes. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this is fun. And then I like put it out and I remember you, Sean, going like, hey, you should just put that out. I'll retweet it. I think this is really funny. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And then it went well. And I was like, wow, people actually like that. Uh, and then it wasn't that I was like, oh, I need to make more videos for the community. It was that just seemed to inspire like, okay, what's the next idea? I'm always trying to find a creative outlet, you know, things to do to continue to express art in different ways. And I think that's what's really cool about the VV platform and these collectibles and NFTs in general is being able to speculate on how the world's going to be, how the metaverse is going to be. And that actually is an art form in itself. And I, it's very kind of you to say that it was a takeover. It absolutely was not. It was just a very supportive <laughs> community. And there are so many incredible content creators that are out there. I just felt so welcomed into the community. It's just been fun to find new inspiring ways to create videos. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, especially, you know, not, not even just the community, but also the leadership team. And David Yu is following you. You're one of like eight people that David Yu is following, which is a really big deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's safe to, to presume that he's a big fan as well. The VV500 is probably one of your most popular videos, just based on views alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was shot around our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I pretty sure I freaked out some of the neighbors. Uh, they were like, who is this guy? Uh, I ended up taking a broom pole and then taping, like duct taping my phone to it. And then <laughs> using some clamps, I like clamped the pole to the top of my car and then <laughs> just drove like a bunch of loops around the neighborhood and just like got a bunch <laughs> of takes and uh, came back and pulled it off and looked at it. And I was like, oh yeah, this, this is going to work pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then really the the hard part wasn't getting all the models. That just took time. Um, the hard part was figuring out how to make the cars move in a realistic way or a semi-realistic way um, in the space. And what's really cool about camera tracking is that it gives you all this data. It knows where you are within a scene, right? So what I was able to do was I figured out if I offset the car from me, from my movement. So I say, I take the same tracking data and give it to a car and I let that car go first. It'll take the same path that my car drove. And uh, that's what like finally clicked and made it all work for me. So basically you're re re recreating the back to the future. Like when you put the thing on the back of the car, <laughs> it looks yeah. like that. <laughs> it literally you looked like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's hilarious. I really enjoyed the small details too. Even just the callback with Kevin on the spaceship, Superman in the sky. There's just a lot of cool details after watching like two or three times. Like, oh, I didn't even notice that before. So mm -hmm. that was really that was really impressive to me. Ah, oh, thanks, bro. Uh, so the there was like a mixed medium kind of happening there. A bunch of different ways to get the effects to show up on screen. Um, one was I was using other 3D models to serve in place of the actual collectibles. Uh, the main ones would be, you know, the DeLorean, Ecto-1, and the Aston Martin. Um, but when I needed to show other collectibles in the scene, that's where I was using that technique of just opening the collectible on a green screen. And then I would capture it. And if I was needing it to look like I was turning around it, I would physically like swipe my thumb along the screen at the same speed to make the collectible turn on the green screen <laughs> and just try to get it as accurate as possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your other video, which is a completely different style, focuses on where Web3 can go, which is really cool. And it's interacting with VB collectibles. So what was your inspiration for that? And man, like you really sparked a lot of excitement within the community for this one too, especially because of the possibilities. And that's something you emphasize in, in the video, the possibilities of, of what could come. What was really inspiring for that was just speculation. I, this is what I wanted to see. It was my version of Ready Player One. 
how could I take my collectibles in these spaces, experience all these different worlds from my home? Um, a lot of that was built in Cinema 4D and Adobe After Effects. Cinema 4D being a more 3D modeling, animating program. After Effects being the thing that it just like brings it all together. It's the Photoshop of video. Um, and in order to get realistic movements, I had to go and take my iPhone and walk in different spaces and get camera tracking data. So it like knew where the camera was looking, where I was turning, that kind of stuff. And I actually did a lot of it while I was uh, on a shoot at work. And so like if I had a break, I would go down into the parking garage and people would just see me walking around with my phone doing weird turns and like, you know, looking different ways. And there's like nothing to look at. So I had a security guard come over and he's like, you OK? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Just <laughs> <laughs> testing something. <laughs> um, and that was probably the. That that was really exciting for me because it was also implementing a song that my dad loves, which is Pure Imagination. And this particular track was used in the Ready Player One trailer. So I thought like, ah, you know, my version of Ready Player One, I got to use this track. And so my goal was like, create something that's a little bit more inspiring and create excitement for the space. That song was so perfect. Because I, I don't yeah. remember that song either in the trailers. And wow, when I heard it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's perfect for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I remember when you showed me drafts of it. I was like, oh, dude, this is amazing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I did learn a hard lesson on this video. And I've learned this lesson many a times before, but for some reason, continue to forget to apply it, which is when you are very tired, you should probably stop working so that you don't make any mistakes. And I spent. <laughs> Uh, probably like four hours on Andy's room from Toy Story where I implemented all these very like like these little nods to all these different Pixar movies. I put in Cars and Wally and Monsters Inc. and like all of these like toys that were like scattered all around the room. But the first draft I did of that room was with none of those toys. And I forgot to switch out the clip when I finally exported the video and I didn't notice it for an entire day after I had posted it on Twitter. And I was like all that work wasted. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. God. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to release the director's cut? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> release the Roth cut. I want the Roth cut. Only if you own the NFT for it. Yeah. 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 The director's you, cut. Yeah, there you go. yeah. 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 <laughs> you guys can help me mint the NFT, right? Yeah. We got you. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And now a word from our sponsor. Looking to buy or sell physical comics? Then check out Elite Comics 11, Instagram's number one community-powered comic sales page. Elite Comics 11 is our favorite place to safely buy and sell comics. They are a CGC and CBCS authorized dealer and sell a variety of comics from Silver Age Grails to modern day keys. Inventory is updated daily and don't forget to check out their incredible almost daily live stream comic sales. The next time you're looking to buy or sell physical comics, make sure you turn to Elite Comics 11. Follow at Elite underscore Comics 11 on Instagram and see what all the buzz is about. The recent Oktoberfest video was a good example of what kind of technology is currently within the app. But a lot of the videos that you make, you probably use a lot of visual effects because of the limitations that we have with technology right now. Right. What kind of limitations do you have with technology when you make these videos? There's a lot of technology out there that makes what I'm doing more available, but just not to the general public. So I'm just using an iPhone and my laptop to do pretty much everything. And so my limitations are based off of how well the AR interacts with the collectible. There's no recording technology within the app. You have to screen record, um, which if you do that for the nerds out there, Kevin Loader will get this. There's like variable frame rates that happen. So like it's not consistent. The phone might get too hot and things will slow down. And so I, I've found myself having to reshoot things like in the middle of filming because we, okay that just skipped a bunch let's cool the phone down try it again the camera within the app doesn't have any image stabilization so everything gets really shaky if you want something that's smooth you have to use something like a gimbal or you know something like that what's a gimbal knowledge what's that 
What's a gimbal? A gimbal is like a stabilizer for the camera that you like hold and put the camera on and you can walk around with it and it'll keep it very smooth. Yeah, it's a gyro basically. So yeah, it's no image stabilization. I don't know how that's going to play into augmented reality and how you read a room because image stabilization in the iPhone is put in after the fact. So while you're filming, the image does look a little shaky. And as soon as you've stopped recording, the image stabilization is applied. So I'm not sure how that will transfer over if they want to apply that into the VB app. The other thing is you can't take the collectibles and use them outside of the app, which is something that makes it difficult to manipulate or put into other programs or that kind of thing. So I find myself a lot of times opening up a collectible in AR in front of a green screen and then recording it that way so that I can then place it into my videos. When you open a showroom, you also don't get any real depth mapping. So I can't walk in front of a bunch of collectibles um, like you can when you just open a singular one. You can place it and it knows how far it is in a scene. People can walk in front and behind. Um, but with a showroom, if you open that up and you have multiple collectibles, you can't walk in front of it. It just is a layer on top of the camera. So that if you want to do some more interesting things, uh, placements of physical pieces within the AR environment, it gets a little bit more tricky. So those are some of the limitations. What I would love to see happen is that the VV app incorporates in a recorder within the app, so you don't have to use screen record. Um, I would love to be able to use the collectible outside of the app within the 3D rendering programs I use. Um, I know that most of the models are built in Unity, um, which is a, a 3D modeling visual effects program. Uh, there are a bunch of them out there. Loader, I think you can actually speak to this, like the just the range of different visual effects programs that are out there. Oh, yeah, there's so many. I mean, Unity is kind of one of the the base standards for a lot of programs out there. Um, but right now you also have things like Unreal Engine, which is taking over the space and something that I think a lot of companies should start looking into, especially, especially Vivi, because they would benefit a lot from that one. It's so unreal, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> My yeah, goodness. It really is. So like, what would you like to see in the future with AR technology and like AR glass? Like, I know we talked about what you think should happen for like Vivi, but like in general what do you hope to see with ar technology oh man you know it's ar technology is equally exciting and scary at the same time i think that there is so much potential for it to be useful in our daily lives and a great example is as soon as the iphone or any smartphone was available where we could check our emails and look up on the web we suddenly had every answer in our pocket when we needed it right yeah. I believe that with AR technology, it's going to be super beneficial for education. Um, it's going to be super beneficial for uh, exploration. Um, and what I mean by that is like a digital exploration, being able to go somewhere you can't, you can't go. You know, I think we actually yeah. talked about this with VV Magic on your podcast a while ago, where it was like, there's going to be people that want to go to Disneyland that can never go to Disneyland. Yeah. So... Yeah they just put on these goggles and they can have the experience, right? And the continuing development of AR and VR is really incredible to me, especially when it comes to tactile and haptic feedback. Um, I know there's companies out there that are developing like the haptic chest uh, plates so you can actually feel things. Um, and they're getting to like such a minutia of what details yeah. they're getting. Like if a wind blows across your chest, you can actually feel the wind hit your uh, chest. Um, yeah. It's pretty incredible. Um, I think AR technology is going to be huge in directions. You know, that Apple's already kind of showing this within their maps on their new iOS where you can have it up and it's a camera looking out a window and it can actually give you a 3D arrow that's pointing in a certain direction and signs and whatnot. Um, Information is going to be at your fingertips all the time. Where I think it would be exciting to explore within VV and AR is being able to use your collectibles in not only just ways where you like decorate your home, you know, like you put your, your collectibles wherever in the home. And anytime you put on your glasses, your home is a different interior design. That's pretty cool. But being able to actually interact with them, use them in other games. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, there is uh is it Fortnite that does a lot of different like additional DLC content where they like bring in like new characters, they'll do Marvel, they'll do Back to the Future, they'll do is it is it that game? Yeah, it's Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite does a lot of that stuff. They they have partnered with Disney many times on stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like big like metaverse, metaverse events like uh yeah. like a giant like travis scott concert or things exactly. like they do yeah. th- a lot of stuff like that gotcha so see i mean that stuff is really cool but like imagine if you could just do that with your collectibles right like okay i'm playing Fortnite today and i want to bust out my doc ock and see what he can do in there you know obviously the barrier to be able to get uh, the barrier that we have to get past to be able to have that happen today is getting smaller and smaller but it's still there um but i do believe my speculation is that we will be able to get to that point i just don't know when but i'm excited for it roth are there any specific characters that you're hoping to come to vb or any type of ip that you'd really enjoy making a short film out of oh boy yes um i would love to see uh, the Bone series, Bone Comics, come to VB. I know that uh, it's it, it, it's not in the Marvel or DC distribution, um, but it's an incredible character, incredible story. Every time I've given out that graphic novel to someone and it's like 900 pages, they look at it and they're like, nah, I'm good. But then like my favorite story is I gave it to one of my good buddies, Jay, and he looked at it, he's like, it looks like a children's comic. I'm not really into it. And then that night at three in the morning, I get a text from him. He's like, 350 pages later. Wow. <laughs> 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 I was like, all right, cool. He sucked in too. Um, I would love to see that. I know that Bone's been a, a series potentially coming to Netflix and it keeps going back and forth. And I know it's, I don't think it's going to happen anymore on Netflix, unfortunately. So, <sighs> bro, I hope it doesn't. Uh, yeah. for my sake <laughs> that bone is uh, bone has been an IP that I have wanted to make as a series for so long and it has been in development hell for the past 20 years and it keeps changing to different writers different directors I mean at one point uh, Mark Osborne director of Kung Fu Panda was signed on to write and direct and then it was with him for three years and then it was shifted over to Netflix um, and I'm just hoping that they hold out long enough for me to come up and scoop it up. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, like our, it's our modern day Don Quixote. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> the first graded physical comics I got were bone comics. Um, I wasn't really, it, it wasn't until you, Sean, when you started explaining how graded comics really function in the physical world. It, it wasn't until you explained that to me that I really got it, you know? Yeah. And then I tend to collect based off of nostalgia, based off of things that I like. So most of my collection is surrounded by Pokemon, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Back to the Future, Harry Potter, Bone, Spider-Man, and then just movie collections different VHSs, DVDs, Blu-rays, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and for everyone out there that doesn't know this Bone series, the first issue especially is insanely valuable in its highest grade. As a 9.8, it's worth about $30,000. It's an incredibly, really? wow. incredibly yeah. valuable book. Yeah, yeah, it really valuable. That was so cool that you that you got into graded comics, and you've got you bought quite a few now, from what I've seen. Yeah, I've got, I'm trying to get the first 12 uh, as first editions, and obviously the first comic is a little out of my reach at the moment maybe someday um but i do have some ungraded first prints basically two through 12 i have um some graded some not so i'm still trying to like get that all situated i don't know why 12 i have no reason to like stop at 12 (laughs) would you trade your mc1 sr for a bone number one comic a high grade that's a tough sell it's a tough sell i don't know (laughs) Yeah, I, I know. know. I know. Uh, you'll be able to yeah. sell that eventually, and you'll be able to acquire your nine eight. So, as a filmmaker, how did you feel about the remembering short film that was released on Disney Plus recently? And how do you think Web three and NFTs will be incorporated into future film projects? First off, I think the technology is pretty incredible 
being able to see a set form into the middle of your room was really awesome. It's another form of storytelling, which I do appreciate, but I do feel like it's a separate form of storytelling and it shouldn't replace filmmaking. And I don't think it ever will. I think it'll be just in another art form. Uh, same way that 360 movies came around and VR, AR movies and, uh, and how like animations are separate from live action and so on and so forth. You know, like I think the technology is exciting where I think it could be better when I was watching the episode is actually seeing the characters also appear in the scene and being able to walk around, choose your camera angles with your phone and like look at them up close as they explore the scene. Uh, but at the moment, what it feels like is at the moment, it feels like it's a true demo of how the technology mm -hmm. can work. Right. Um, it doesn't really add to the story. It does create a cool experience, but for instance, that specific scene in the first episode when the waterfall pours out, it's just a long period of looking at this beautiful scene that doesn't really add to the story. And even the dialogue that's happening in it, it felt like it was placed there so that you didn't miss any of the storytelling, right? Like they're kind of just talking back and forth and it doesn't add anything to the story, doesn't take anything away from the story, but it gives you that moment to sit there and explore the scene. I think that's really cool. I'm very interested to see how NFTs play a part of the film industry because the way the model currently stands and how people have been implementing it is that the NFT is just another form of a distribution of the film. Uh, a great example is there was a movie with Christopher Maloney um, that was a short film that was done not too long ago. And the whole point of it was to be sold as an NFT. That's why it was made. We, we knew we were going to sell this as an NFT that was going to be sold on OpenSea. And the director even said, we are not going to have any of the raw footage. Everything is going to be destroyed except for some special feature stuff that will be attached to the short film NFT. And that's the only copy of it that'll be out there. And that's not unique because that's already what the studios have, you know? Um, the studios can buy a film and never show it to anybody because they own that. And it only gets out there once they've started to release it. So whoever's buying this short film in a, in a sense becomes a distributor or they just choose not to distribute. So it hasn't provided a unique, uh, form factor for the film industry yet. For me, I am curious from your guys' perspective, what do you think is going to happen with NFTs and the film industry. Definitely could see a future where, you know, owning an NFT gives you, uh, you know, some kind of like a, a supplemental experience to a film or a movie. Whereas like, if you own a certain NFT, then you get, you get an experience in that film that people who don't own it have. So maybe you get like the end credit scene because you own a specific, you know, NFT, or maybe you get outtakes, you know, if you, right. if you own an NFT. But, you know, I think it'll still probably be a similar model where, you know, it's almost like a freemium model where like, you know, everybody will have access to the the base film or the base base TV show, but then NFTs can then augment that experience and then make it better. Um, so, you know, like yeah. AR, for example, like maybe, maybe you don't have that AR component unless you buy the AR NFT that enables that for you to watch it on Netflix. And then now you're, now you get that experience, but you wouldn't have had that otherwise. That makes total sense. Yeah. Cause it, on a visual medium, it's very tough to like keep that a secret, right? If you mm -hmm. offer up special features, let's say as an NFT holder, all it takes for that one NFT holder is like, well, if I own this, then I'm just going to put it out on YouTube for anybody else to see. Yep. And at that point, yeah. it's like, okay, so what was the utility behind holding that NFT? So I think that is needs to get refined is what is the utility mm -hmm. that's going to be based to this that makes it unique enough for people to want it, right? Yep. Um, I liked what you said about like, it enhances the experience for somebody watching it. Um, I don't remember, it might've been like 10, it might've been about 10 years ago. There was a series that was like a, like a choose your own adventure series. It wasn't the black mirror series, but it was another series where like you would watch as you're watching the episode, when you got to the end of the episode, you were voting on where the episode was going next and they would shoot three separate experiences at the same time. And then choose it once you chose the vote decided on where the next episode would be. You wouldn't, as a viewer, get to choose 
like your own experience and get a different experience than everybody else. It was like a grand, like general public voted on this. This is how the next episode is going to be. So mm -hmm. uh, if almost kind of like what bat cows is doing with like, you know, owners of bat cows can influence how the story goes, you know, it, right. almost like that. Yeah. It almost plays a little bit into the cinematic storytelling of a video game, right? Like there's a lot of video games now that I tend to play that have more of a cinematic appeal than just, you know, first person shooter, uh or like kind of turn your brain off games where you're just like you know simpsons tap or whatever you know <laughs> i tend to try and experience those kind of games so if they can bring that into the film world i think that would be really interesting we have a bit of a surprise today don't we for our audience oh yes we do we're going to be showing a premiere of roth's amazing new brand new spanking Short film, short VD film. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it before we? It's a brand new spanking film. <laughs> it's yeah. a brand new spanking film. <laughs> yeah. Spank you. Woo! Yeah. Uh, funny. Uh, the funny thing is, is I do get spanked in this film. So uh, by Sean. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, you're not supposed to release that one. That one isn't supposed to go. Out. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a new project uh, that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. It is a mixture of Super Smash Brothers, VV Collectibles, and a little bit of a social AR aspect to it. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, let me know what you think. Without further ado, enjoy VV Smash. Free for a game? Yeah, I'm free for a game. Yeah, I bet you are. Okay, don't make it weird. Where are you? <laughs> Ready? Bring it on! Go! <clears throat> no skill! <clears throat> Here come the Grails! Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, why are you so fast? Come here! Come here! Live while you pop Come on, take that, take that, take that. Ah. Ah. Crap. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Uh, 007 in your face. We all know what the better ship is. Oh, it's always up huh? Yeah. How about a little 1977 mid-number for you? Ooh, shiny. Okay. <laughs> Time to bring the hammer down. Bring it on. I <laughs> No chance, no way! Going down! And done, son! Uh, <laughs> Looks so nice, you did it twice. Okay. Okay. Bye bye, Sean. Who knew he could be more annoying? <laughs> <laughs> 